Hello everyone, this is Harry. In this issue, we'll have an American thriller film, The Talented Mr. Ripley. The protagonist Tom Ripley was an ordinary man. At a party, he met a rich businessman. The rich man saw him in his school uniform and thought that he and his son Dickie had been in the same school. So he offered Ripley a thousand dollars to go to Italy and bring his son back. His son had been out for a long time. He needed to bring his son back for a good education. Ripley knew that his school uniform was borrowed, but he didn't explain. Instead, he pushed the boat along and accepted the invitation of the rich man. He had been longing for Europe, but he was short of money. Why not travel by others' money this time? According to Ripley's plan, he arrived in Italy smoothly. As soon as he got off the boat, Ripley made friend with Meredith. Meredith was from a rich family. She was very excited to see that Ripley was an American. When introducing himself, Ripley naturally borrowed Dickie's name. Let Meredith thought that he was the son of a rich businessman. They talked like old friends. After saying goodbye, Ripley found Dickie according to the map. Dickie and his girlfriend Marge were on a beach in Italy. Ripley pretended to be Dickie's alumnus and made a chance encounter on the beach. But Dickie didn't the alumni. But out of courtesy, they invited Ripley to lunch. At lunch, Ripley showed Dickie his talent for imitation. In addition to imitating signature, he could also imitate other people's speech vividly. When Ripley imitated Dickie's father's voice, Dickie was so surprised and excited that he asked Marge to listen to his father's voice. Then Ripley did what Dickie's father said to himself again. He told Dickie what he was here for. Dickie immediately said he would never go back. Couldn't persuade. According to the regulations, Ripley could only return to the US. But Ripley didn't want to go back so easily. So he broke the briefcase and revealed the jazz records. The records attracted Dickie. He thought Ripley was as much a jazz fan as he was. He felt that it was not too late to meet each other, so he urged Ripley to stay. Ripley got what he wanted and soon joined Dickie and Marge. Dickie also took Ripley as his best friend. He let Ripley live in his own house. Dickie took Ripley to sing together and join with the upper class. He wrote back to his father and lied that he would go back soon. He colluded with Ripley to cheat his father. Ripley enjoyed all this. He had a great learning ability. Learnt Dickie's signature. Also gradually accustomed to such a good life. He liked those gorgeous and extravagant days. At the same time, Dickie's kindness also infected Ripley. Day after day, Ripley began to have different feelings for Dickie. But happy days were always quick. The arrival of Dickie's good friend Freddie made Ripley feel lost for the first time. He felt out of favor with Dickie. He thought Dickie would go with him to buy a coat. But Dickie simply asked Ripley to put on his old coat first. He went to play with Freddie. Ripley came home in Dickie's expensive clothes. He was so happy that he sang. Dickie came back and saw, looked unhappy and ordered him to take it off. Ripley couldn't accept Dickie's moodiness. He changed his clothes and went back to the party, but he was ridiculed by Freddie. Ripley was embarrassed but had nothing to say. His feeling began to change slowly. On Notre Dame's day, Dickie committed suicide because of his heartlessness. Dickie fell into a deep sense of responsibility, and Ripley finally had a chance to get close to Dickie. But it was not the same with before. Dickie was no longer enthusiastic. He refused Ripley's request to stay. He hoped they could say goodbye at the last party. At the dinner table, Ripley confided his feelings. Unfortunately, Dick ignored it intentionally. In the afternoon, on the small boat, Dickie said he was going to get married. Ripley couldn't control himself. He expressed his love again. Dickie thought it funny and made a sarcastic remark on Ripley. Ripley lost his temper and they began to fight each other. Unexpectedly, Dickie was killed by Ripley. Being lonely on the sea, Ripley lay in the cold arms of Dickie. Lost the one you love most, your life still has to go on. Ripley returned to the hotel, but was mistaken by the receptionist for Dickie. This opened the new world for Ripley. He wrote Marge a parting letter in Dickie's handwriting. Then Ripley came to Rome and started a new life as Dickie. In the following period of time, Ripley used his superb imitation skills to communicate with everyone in two identities. It was like two people exist at the same time. The talented Mr. Ripley. On the street of Rome, Ripley met the rich friend Meredith again. Meredith had no doubt about his identity, accompanied him to withdraw cash by check and buy some clothes. Then they went to the opera together. Coincidentally, Ripley met Marge in the theater, and another person who influenced the rest of his life, Peter. Peter had a good impression on Ripley, but Marge kept thinking about Dickie, and she began to doubt Ripley. To dispel doubt, Ripley asked them to meet the next day. On the same night, Ripley caught Marge's heart and asked her to meet the next day. Meredith and Marge met according to Ripley's plan. Ripley used Meredith's words to convince Marge that Dickie was still there. It was just a change of heart, but it didn't last long. Dickie's friend Freddy suddenly visited Ripley's life. As the person who knew Dickie best, Freddy soon saw through Ripley's lies. The aggressiveness of words left Ripley nowhere to hide. In despair, Ripley killed Freddy with a statue. Of course, Freddy's death also attracted the police. At the same time, Marge came to Dickie to find out. In order to completely dispel the suspicion of the police and Marge, Ripley packed Dickie's luggage and destroyed the photo on Dickie's ID. Made a fake scene that Dickie couldn't bear the pressure, ready to commit suicide. 
Then, Ripley returned to his identity and came to Venice. Peter welcomed him warmly. The police interrogated Ripley again and handed Dickie's suicide note to Ripley. In the suicide note, Dickie called Ripley his best brother. In the letter, he showed that he would give the assets to Ripley. Ripley finally cleared up the suspicion and went home with Peter. During this time, Ripley and Peter talked about life. Ripley told Peter that he had a dark side in his heart. No one could enter without a key. But Peter comforted Ripley and told him to be happy. Ripley began to regret what he had done. He regarded the kind and gentle Peter as his redeemer, but he knew in his heart that there was no way to change his past. Now he could only take a heavy mask when meeting others. When Marge came back again, Dickie's father went to the private detective and started looking for his son. Ripley began to have nightmares all night, but Peter still supported him. Ripley gave Peter the key of his house. Peter smiled and said, it's also your key. One day, Ripley was taking a bath and was called out by Marge. She found Dickie's ring in Ripley's house by accident. The ring Dickie promised never to take off. Marge began to doubt Ripley again. They were fighting in the room. Ripley held the blade in his hand and pressed it. Marge shivered with fear that Ripley was going to kill himself. Just then, Peter came back. Ripley cut himself with a blade and turned away. Peter bandaged his wound and they laughed at each other. Marge told Dickie's father about the ring. But Dickie's father asked his people to take to Ripley. It turned out that Dickie nearly abused a boy to death few years ago. Dickie's history of violence showed that he could kill people. Finally, Dickie's father followed Dickie's will. Dickie's wealth was transferred to Ripley's account. As for Marge's suspicious, Dickie's father didn't think the same. He just thought that it was because Dickie lost his lover. No one believed Marge anymore. Only those who knew the truth were solved, and Ripley finally did as he thought. He got everything he wanted. Ripley and Peter set out on the journey. On the ship, they were laughing. But the accident came again, Meredith was on the ship. Ripley kissed Meredith to keep her steady. Back in the room, Peter, who was reading in bed, suddenly asked, is that Meredith? Turned out that Peter saw it. Realizing that he couldn't hide Peter, Ripley said with a smile that he was going to be trapped in the basement. Facing Peter's puzzled eyes, Ripley was full of sadness. He told Peter that he lost himself. He wanted to be a rich man, not an ordinary man. Then Ripley walked slowly over to the bed and put his head on Peter's back. Slowly winding around the bow tie in his hand, let Peter tell him about the merits of Tom Ripley. Peter was as gentle as ever. In his eyes, Ripley was gifted, gentle and handsome. Ripley was not an ordinary man. He was full of secrets. Besides, Ripley had a man who loved him deeply. Peter's voice got smaller and smaller until it disappeared. Ripley finally killed the last threat. Killed the man who knew him best. In order to humble vanity, he sacrificed his feelings. Until the end, he was defeated by desire. The key to the basement door would disappear forever. It was impossible to give to anyone. And that young man, perhaps tomorrow, might never be free. Well, that's all for this issue. Don't forget to follow and like my videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time.